I'm grateful to be partnering with Netflix and television. I'm exclusive there. When I sat down with them, it was pretty straightforward. We kind of knew that like, we we're like, okay, let's see if we want to date each other. It's like, we, we did a couple things together and now it's like, let's see what this can actually tangibly look like. And so I went in and I pitched five ideas. They loved them all. And those ideas became the basis in addition to working with Ryan on Hollywood and directing other programming of his. I'm just so proud. I'm proud of the fact that the work that I've done so far in the industry, specifically writing and directing and producing Pose, that that has enabled these super creative forces to kind of stand behind me and say, there's a voice here and there's a perspective here and we want to see more from her, that she has more to offer than just, you know, the characters on this one fantastic, amazing, trailblazing show, that there are other characters in her, other stories for her to tell. All of us could truly be gone one day. Where our kind is just a memory, one the rest of the world would be happy to forget. All we have left is right now. This story has to start with Ryan Murphy, who's a mentor of mine, who of course is also my boss and a dear friend. He felt that I needed to show that I could do more than just the characters on Pose. His first throw at me was, I want you to direct on the first season of The Politician, a show that you did not write, that the characters are so far from your own experience. And once I directed that, he used that, and he showed that to Netflix. And they were just like, huh, she does have more to give. And so when they tangibly called me and said, this is the deal point and this is what, we, <laughs> what we're gonna offer you, it was life-changing. And I think that I never imagined that that could happen for someone like me. I never saw someone like me with the power and the ability to green light her own projects, to say that I have a spark of an idea and I want to develop that idea and here's a whole team of people behind me to help me do that and this is your productions and that you can go out and you can make this happen for series and for, for features. In my career. I think a lot of the work that I have done has involved a lot of firsts. I understand the burden and the weight of being the first. The first, you know, young person to write a memoir about transitioning. The first in my family to get a college degree and then a master's degree. The first to join a Hollywood writer's room. The first trans woman of color to direct and write an episode of television. And then now the first to have a bankable, sizable deal that will enable me to be empowered to tell my community stories and to tell my stories on a global stage. You know, the platform alone is not one that's limited to just this country, these 50 states, right? It's countries all around the world. And so in that sense, I think about the capacity of my ability now to follow this ethos that I love so much from Michelle Obama that she gave at the DNC convention. And she said that when you walk through that doorway of opportunity, you don't shut the door behind you, you reach back and you bring people in with you. When you've worked hard and done well and, and walk through that doorway of opportunity, you do not slam it shut behind you. No, you reach back and you give other folks the same chances that help you succeed. In 2014, I went to be the um, San Francisco LGBT Pride Grand Marshal, and also on the slate as a Grand Marshal was one of my heroines and kind of a chosen mother in my life, Miss Major Griffin Gracie, who's a Stonewall um, Rebellion veteran. She's a longtime activist. She's a black trans woman who has been doing work since 1969 to fight for our communities, and she's still doing it today in her 70s. She's a phenomenal woman, and I remember just kind of having this sense of like murkiness of like, what is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? And she just looked at me and she said, baby girl, your job is to be a Trojan horse. Your job is that we fought so hard for you to have access to an education for medical health care, for being professionalized, to be able to get a book deal, to be seen on platforms that you're being seen on now. And so you have all the things that society says that we should have in order to be seen and heard, and now you're being seen and heard. And so your job now, like that Trojan horse, is to go in and blow shit up. And so it's as simple as that. And I was like, these are my marching orders. I am the Trojan horse. That's what I'm supposed to do. 
It's a fight against the tokenization. It's a fight against the, the diversity quotas. But it's about pushing back against that to say, how can I get more? And when I get more, how can I make sure that I'm fighting for more people like me to be given access to come in? So making sure we have more choreographers and more hair and makeup people and more female grips you know, on sets. And so my job is to, I believe, is to go into those spaces that I'm invited into and to make sure that I'm bringing our people in and that I'm hopefully transforming those spaces for the better.